The low paying freight is the problem right now. And it's been and it's been this problem around some people they realize this early on, meaning about three years ago, four years ago, some people just realized about like a year ago. Some people realized um, in a post-pandemic, meaning right after the COVID. What I'm trying to say is this is a huge problem. And, and I've been getting a lot of um, a lot of emails and, and, and text messages about this, the situation that we have right now. And I decided to do a, a quick, I would say Q&A. I don't know how long you know will it take, but then what it's going to take. But I really want to do a a help navigating um, through this uh, problem that we have right now: the low paying freight, the low paying um, loads that we have. So I really want this to be a question um, the the Q and A. But then obviously I need a question to help you guys with with. Um, with with the help that you guys have. So I did prepare before this um, live. Usually I don't prepare. I just, you know, click record and I know that there is a problem and I start talking um, and whatever I implement in my business and I share with the world. So obviously if you are an owner operator, owner operator, it's, it's a person who owns a truck and trailer and drives for, for a company. Um, maybe you have your own company, meaning, meaning you have your MC. Uh, for those of you who don't know the MC, and, and the reason why I say this is because I read comments uh, as you go through the videos, if you can just scroll down to comments and you see that a lot of people, that newcomers, um, they get excited about freight dispatching, maybe trucking in general, but some terminology, terminology is, for example, a tunnel, which is truck word not used, then MC numbers, whatnot. It's it's new to them, and I feel kind of obligated to, you know, answer this question um, in advance, saying that the MC stands for motor carrier, meaning if you are a carrier, so if you have your own MC and your own DOT and and moving loads. And you're using specifically load boards, which is spot market. And it's to me right now is crashed. Not many people getting good loads off of the load boards, but this is the problem. So problem for, um, um, you know, to be solved, the problem is a low paying freight and how we're going to solve this. As always, the, the Q&A format that I've, I've been doing for last couple of years is that there is a problem. And obviously, we kind of talk about this problem and go into details. Um, it's sort of like we kind of deep dive into this problem. What will happen if we have this long term, for example, a year for two years, for um, for 40 years, for example? What will happen if we have this problem? We're fighting with this problem. But if you're not properly fighting with this problem, what, what is going to happen with my business? So then, obviously, that, that's the first point. The second point is we go into the solution. So what are the solutions? So I do have one broad solution, but it's very important to talk about this. But it, at the same time, I have a specific solution that you can guys implement. And many of you may be asking, I will go to the third um, point why I do um, way that I do the, the the life, which is the format we talked about, the problem we talked about, a um, little bit of a kind of agitating the problem, if you will. So we feel that pain. And then obviously we go into the solution. And then obviously what's the plan? What we are going to do? So we'll come up with the plan and we'll take it from there. A lot of you may be asking this question like, Kamal, um, it, it's like, why you are going to do it. like why you are talking about this in in the first place like why if if you have a business in in if you are killing it or maybe you are struggling it maybe you're doing great but then why you are sharing this for the subscribers and the people that are following me for for a long time and I was a a carrier I owned a four trucks and I was in the flatbed market. Many of you know who've been following me for a long, long time. You, I share this story. I'm not going to go into details, but uh, the company called the Prime Express, and I failed that company. 
I failed it because I didn't know the marketing. I didn't know the um, sales behind this. I didn't have a quote unquote team A dispatchers in my company. I didn't know how to assemble um, great teams so that we can, um, you know, crush it. Now, I feel really obligated to help those carriers so that they don't fail like I did. They fail miserably, meaning specifically carrier side of my business. Then obviously I changed the model. For those of you who don't know, I changed. I realized before the pandemic that it's going to be really bad and bloody. And I changed the business model to you know dispatch other people's trucks who are doing great, for example. And maybe there's a question like, okay, so if there's a carrier does great, then why he needs a dispatcher? This is a very common question, but it's it's kind of open-ended question. We will, you know, go deep into this, why the carrier who is really killing it, but they need, you know, um, dispatchers, in, specifically independent freight dispatchers. I'm not talking about the, the dispatchers that are sitting in the office for a carrier and works for a carrier. So many of you know, and, and again, these are the subscribers who know who will be following me, um, that I teach people how to become independent freight dispatchers. So let's talk about if you are a carrier here today watching, please comment and let me know the number one problem that you have right now. The problem we have, the low paying freight, we, we, we got that. But then tell me the number one problem you have in your business right now. So obviously you do have problems in your business and the low paying, it, it kind of it, it, it adds more problem into your business. But then let me let me know what is the number one problem that you have in your business. Hey, Kamal, what is the current cost per mile? Let me pull this real quick. Um, Diksha says, hey, Kamal, what is the current cost per mile and how to file EFTA? So we will talk about the cost per mile, but this is very important and I'm glad you brought this up, but I'm not going into talking EFTA because it's very complicated and it's just like I always, even I don't teach in the program, like I don't, I'm not teaching how to do IFTA. And there's a big reason for this. For those of you who are teachers, like teaching people how to become independent freight dispatchers. So there is the number one reason why I don't touch IFTA. So I'll come back to this one. Let me give the third component on, you know, we we're talking about the, um, how I structure this live Q&A is, is the problem. We, we talk about the problem. Problem today is a low paying freight. Then we go into the solution. As I said, I have two solutions. One is one of them is abroad, but it's, again, it's a, it's a very, very important talk. And then the, the second one is the um, more specific solution. So, and then third one, obviously, this is where we have the third component, which is really, really important, is the Q&A session. This is Q&A is for these types of questions, like, well, what's the cost per mile or uh, what's the rate per mile, for example, and how to optimize these cost per miles, whatnot. And then we'll go into details. Well, I'll take this question right now and then we'll move on. I really need engagement from you guys. This is a QA and a and this is where we're not going into details talking about, but here I'm not going to coach or teach on a specific, you know, subject, for example, marketing, more specifically social media marketing. I'm, you know, talking about the uh, ins and outs of social media marketing and specifically guiding you like step one, do this, step two, do this, but rather it's just a and a This is where you like maybe you're struggling it and then like, hey, this is my number one problem right now. Can you help me? Like, can you share the resources that you have? And I do share my resources. I shared a lot with a lot of people, the contract that I use. I shared a lot of people who asked me about, hey, Kamal, I'm running Facebook ads, but I really want you to just take a look for a couple of minutes. Just take a look and look at my ads and let me know if I can run these ads. So I'm not successful with this. Do you, do you have ad copies? And I share my ad copies. I really do. I really do share with these people, you know, with the people that they are struggling. It's worth the ask, right? So if you ask, I will provide. But 
before we you know deep dive into this and i'll take this question please ask me questions so if i see that questions are coming i'll be here i'll be helping you and we will talk about the the, the solution and then obviously we'll go into the q a so let me take this diksha goyle says um the the, the cost per mile. So the cost per mile is different than rate per mile. So I don't, I don't want you to confuse you. Um, but then cost per mile, what you said, you said, what's the current cost per mile? The current cost per mile, I'm assuming you're asking what's the current cost. I mean, what was the rate per mile? Why? Because cost per mile is very different carrier to carrier. For example, I had four trucks, right? So I had one used and a three brand new trucks, okay, 780s. So the cost per, let's, let's label them, for example, truck number one and then truck number two, truck number three, and then truck number four. So truck number one cost per mile is very different than the truck number that I have, for example, three. It's very different. So why is that? Well, the cost could be, um, let's say, dollar twenty cents per mile for the, let's say, old truck that I have or the used truck that I have, maybe cost per mile for um, new truck. It could be somewhere like, I don't know, dollar fifty, dollar sixty. Why is that? Because for the used truck, maybe I bought it. I don't have... The, the fixed cost, something like paying monthly um, for the, well, like a truck payment and trailer payment. Whereas I have a new truck and I have, let's say now trucks are really expensive and I have, for example, $5,000 payment on just, just a truck and then another $2,000 for a trailer and this adds up and that's the cost. Well, let me take back and say that for those of you who don't understand this cost per mile is basically... Every mile that your truck drives, there is a cost associated, right? So you have a driver pay. So if you are a carrier, you own, <clears throat> excuse me, two or more trucks, then obviously you have, um, you know, fuel cost. And more specifically, we can talk about like fixed cost and variable cost. You know, the 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 fixed cost they don't change. I'm using like very simple language to to kind of express this because it's very, very important. We can deep dive into this, but then cost, the, the specific or the fixed cost is these are never change. For example, your um, DAT subscription, they don't change for, let's say, for at least six months or, or a year. It's about like $150 or $200 and it's a monthly subscription, never change. And then you have a truck payment in other three to to four thousand dollars for a truck, and it would, you know it's not going to change for about like three to four years, or five years, or six years, whatnot. And then obviously your tra trailer payment. And on top of that, you have insurance that you're paying monthly. It could be like somewhere I don't know, fifteen hundred dollars, twenty um, two thousand five hundred dollars per month. And this adds up, and this is the cost that never change month to month, right? These are the fixed costs. Then now you have a variable cost. The variable cost. Um, one example could be the fuel cost. It changes, right? The cost for the fuel can, you know, jump up high as, I don't know, as high as $10, but just, you know, that's, you know, I'm throwing the numbers, but then as low as it can go like a $2 or $3 uh, per gallon, something like that, right? So it, it, it fluctuates basically. Then driver pay. So if you're a carrier, if you have drivers and it, and, and it fluctuates. So those are, are, are the variable costs. So when you add up and then divide it by the miles, let's say driven every single month, and then you divide, let's say 10,000 miles um, your driver drove, and then adding these numbers and then dividing by the miles. So this is how you get cost per mile. So the, usually what you get around, let's say $1.20 to $1.50, something like that, that how much is costing you to run a truck. So think about now that is for one truck, then I had four trucks. So now what I need to do as a business owner, look at the truck, let's say 001, which is my used truck, and I see that this is $1.50. It costing me for every mile that I drive, it costing me $1.50. So I need to book a load for this truck. So if I'm profitable at the, let's say, if I get the dollar on top of it at the cost per mile, which is... $2.50. How I come up with this number? 
the remember we talked about this is this the truck number 001 which is used truck and it costed me dollar 50 to run this and then on top of that i need a dollar to be profitable now i'm looking for at least two dollars and fifty cents to negotiate with the broker so you get that idea right so and again these numbers can change for some people the, the cost per mile is high for some people cost per mile is very low and this is one of the points is very very important points to talk about because some people have very low cost per mile for example let's um, and again throwing the numbers for just example purposes think about if i have 50 cents per mile that that's how much it's costing me to drive let's say my truck and then you you have a cost per mile of dollar 50 so we're using exactly same load board let's say dat power load board and we're looking for a load and then that load posted for dollar 80 you calculate it and you see that this the rate is dollar 80 you are not taking this load because it's it's costing you to dollar 50 to run your truck but remember it's costing me a 50 cents to run my truck right and again th this is an example right don't take me on these numbers and say come on there's no such a thing as a 50 cents um costing you know per mile although there might be a person that has this low cost per mile so now that is a competition right so that is a competition in in a lot of people who have let's say low cost per mile they take on this load and you're just sitting it in in like who took this load this load was literally posted for dollar 70 dollar 80 and i can't pick this load and guy next to me picks this load why because the cost per mile okay so coming back to this four truck analogy so the truck number 001 costing me a dollar 50 but then I have the second truck, which is, let's say, let's label that truck as 002. Now, this costing me $1.25, right? So $1.25. So the next truck, the third truck, let's label it 003. It costing me, let's say, a dollar, just $1, let's say. And then the fourth one, the fourth truck that I have, let's label it 004, costing me is about like $1.47 cost per mile. So what I need to do right now is add up and divided by four now i have my company cost per mile so this information is very important if you are a carrier and you're hiring um, independent freight dispatchers telling them that hey each truck has a different cost per mile i have seen a lot of people when i do sales calls with with carriers so that we can dispatch their trucks what I have, when I ask this question saying, what's, what's the cost per mile for, the, for example, if you have six trucks, you know, like, okay, what's the label, right? So the, the numbers for your truck, and I, I, I list them, and I said, okay, what's the cost per mile for 001? You'd be shocked if I share this with you. About 95% of the time when I ask this question, carriers, they don't know the numbers. And I'm guilty. I was a carrier and I didn't know this specifically. Um, the, the, the probably I, well, let me take back. I did know the cost per mile, but it was kind of rough. It wasn't the exact number that I work off of it. And what will happen at the end of the day, not knowing this number and you, you're not sharing this properly with your independent freight dispatcher or in-house you know, dispatchers, at the end of the month, you see that you moved a lot of stuff, meaning loads or freight, you have a lot of cost associated with it and you're not making any money. That's, that's the number you need to know before you're looking for a rate per mile. And obviously rate per mile is basically, um, it, it's, it's, it's straightforward, right? The, the rate that are posted by a broker, let's say it's $2 per mile. Um, it's a $3 per mile or whatnot. So this is very important. And, and I'm, I hope this makes sense. And again, if you have more specific questions, please um, let me know. Let me take this. Mr. Solo says the biggest problem is identity theft. Um, phishing, double brokers from a broker standpoint. Okay, I'm assuming that you are a broker. Well, recently we had a conversation with DAT and there are a lot of, imagine like a 
like multi-billion dollar company, they have problems, right? And they, they're they're creating systems and SOPs around this. Um, it's the, the identity theft and, and the double brokers. Let's talk specifically. Um, phishing is another you know problem, obviously. Then the double brokers. There are a lot of I would say fake brokers using load boards and, and it causing them a lot of, well, I would say a lot of money, but then a lot of headaches for the, the, the DAT. If you don't know how to fight back or maybe if you don't have like streamline, or if you don't, let, let's, let's talk about like a systems. If you don't have a system that fights back or reduces this risk, and obviously that's, that, that is the problem. So double brokers, is huge, and I think we need to do another video specifically talk about double brokering and and how to deal with it, because it, it, I do see that this question you know comes a lot. So let's take this and then and, and then we create another live stream, and we will go in depth talking about the double brokers. Not going into the phishing, not going into the identity theft. I think that's straightforward, but. The, you know that is a problem, and 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 it's it's out there. And then if you don't have a proper system in place, um, how to filter those you know double brokers? And we dealt a lot when I was a carrier. So I do have some tips and tactics. I'll you know would love to share with you. Let's say um, let's let me take this. Do you think rates are bad <laughs> or it's back to normal status to what is was the before the pandemic booming? Okay, so the, the question is really basically what was the like what what was the, the the like let's talk about the rates before the pandemic and rates post pandemic right after the pandemic. Guys, I had a conversation with my fellow carriers, and those are my friends, obviously, we realized it seems maybe some of you who've been in you know long time in the trucking industry, and maybe you realize this, but if you did, please share with me and then please comment on this one. We had we had like 2012. Think about like we, we're not talking about 2017, 2019, um, I mean 2018, 2019 in, in, in like pandemic 2020 and 21. We went way back. This is where steadily started decreasing. So if you go back, if you're a carrier, if you're an independent freight dispatcher, if you're a broker, just go and take the all the rate confirmation and you will realize that it's in 2012, it started, it's like very step by step, like a, like very small, I think percentage, but it started around twelve, like twenty twelve, and it started decline like twenty thirteen. Fast forward twenty fifteen, twenty fourteen, twenty fifteen. When I was like, hey, I really want to build this business, meaning my trucking company, and this is where my, you know, close friends they've been in business, let's say for 15, 20 years, said that, hey, don't go into this. Imagine, like we have a situation right now, which is the worst ever. And then the people back then in 2014, 2015, 2016-ish, people saying that Kamal don't go because rates are bad. Why rates are bad? Because they're comparing to, let's say, 2012, 2013, 2015, right? So rates are bad, don't go. Don't buy a truck but just dispatch, okay? That, that's where the idea came from. But I, and, and again, I, I didn't listen. I just did, bought the truck and then this is how I started. And because of that, I struggled. In 2015 and 2016, it's declining rapidly. We think about like we're getting ready to a pandemic. Nobody knows. Everybody drives. People might say like, hey, Kamal, we've, we crushed in 2015, 2016, 2017. Maybe, maybe you are crushing it right now. More power to you. Maybe you are the less than one percent of the population that do this or does this, right? But I'm talking about the the rest of us. In 2015 and 2016, this is where it was kind of tank is sinking, right? Or, or the Titanic is sinking. Like 2016, 2017, 2018 was kind of okay for us. But again, I'm talking about specifically flatbed market, guys. If you do van or if you do car hauling if you do different type like um um 
let's let's talk about like having to do loads. Well, th think about like you like think about military loads. I'm just specifically talking about the flatbed. I'm specifically talking about more specifically. I'm talking about the step decks, right? I'm not talking about the refrigerate market. I'm not uh, talking about the drive-in, not a car hauling, specifically drive-in. So if you want to add, please add. So in, in 2018, in, in moving fast forward 2019, this is where the pandemic kicked, at least in the United States. And then in 20, you, you guys know, I'm not going to go into details. It was really bad in 2020, 2021. Uh, there's like, you know, spikes, you know, here and there, but then it was just rapid decline. And now post pandemic, this is the worst scenario that we have, right? So now is a very bad situation. So compared to obviously pre-pandemic or before the pandemic rates, um, I can say, and again, so we had, we gone over about like 300, I don't know, close to 400, you know, rate confirmations before the pandemic. So I can say in a flatbed, the years that I can share with you is about, let's not to 2015, 2016 to 2019. The average that we had is about like a four point, um, four point two or something like that. Let, let's call it four point zero. And right after the post pandemic, so if you look at the rate confirmations, it, it's like half of that. Think about like average is about two point zero. So that's how you can like think about what you're asking about the rates before the pandemic and after the pandemic. That was the difference. And if you like, why is that? But then I did a, a live stream on this channel. You can look at the, the, the I, I, I can't remember on top of my head what was the title for um, for that video. But I will be um, I'll share that video in the comments right after, you know, we post this live stream so again if you guys have questions please if you have inputs please share with me so we can, i can touch that um and then we go into into details so i hope this helps but this is how th that that was a difference as far as rate per mile concerned so it was 4.0 now think about like a 2.0 like half is gone right so imagine how people are struggling because of this so I also shared, and again, this is my own predictions, and, and this is, um, let's say, my own opinion, what I think, since you asked this, like, what do you think, right? Will will this will get back to normal? normal? Well, obviously, yes, it will get, but I think not only freight industry changed, and again, guys, I'm sharing this bottom of, from bottom of my heart, but I really want to be, um, straightforward with this, with what I see in my business and in other people's businesses, and I do a lot of consultation, and I do see a lot of people struggling. So, and again, it's my personal opinion. We're not going to get to back to normal. I don't think we, normal is, I think this is what I'm struggling. What do you mean when you say normal? I'm kind of predicting saying, okay, back to normal rate. I don't think we will go back to normal, and, and here's why. Not only the freight industry changed forever, yes, forever, it changed forever, guys. And again, this is my personal opinion, and then I will go in depth if we wanted to. But the world has changed, right? So th think about one, the, the trending topic right now we have is AI, artificial intelligence. Think about that. So when I say artificial intelligence, a lot of you may be thinking like, okay, chat GPT thing, but like take back the AI, we, we used to use AI. So if, if you like one of the um, one of the people who started using early the, the load was think about AI, right? So you've been working with AI for, for many, many years. Just think about AI, selfless, less, like drive less, you know, trucks that we have, right? So the thing about AI is huge and it's just like, it's, it's part of the problem. Now, it's, it's changed forever. And again, this is my personal opinion. I don't think we'll go back to normal. I think there is a new normal that we need to adapt. And this is where a lot of people are struggling. Let me repeat one more time. I don't think we'll, ha we'll go back to normal like pre-pandemic. That world, to me at least, it's gone. Gone forever. 
But then there is a new normal world, I would say. It's, it's like it's a new normal or it's a new norm that we need to adjust. That's how it's different. And this is one of the reasons why I believe that we never go back to normal. And, and think about if you from U.S., and because the trucking is specific for U.S. market, think about when the cost has gone up. Think about the, the trucks that you're buying or were buying. The price increased. Did it ever go back to the normal? Like you bought a truck, let's say back in 2015 for a six sixty thousand dollars, let's say 2016, 2015, 780 Volvo, right around I don't know ninety thousand miles or or eighty thousand miles on it. Now it's gone, and it's never going back to that normal. So the inflation, right? So if you had, let's say, pre-pandemic, if you had. Um, let's say in 2019, $100,000 in your bank account, that $100,000 on paper is the exact same thing, but then now is 2023, that $100,000 is very different. Why, why is that? Why am I saying this? Because of the inflation. The inflation is not going this. The inflation goes like this, right? So it's not going to go back to normal. And I say this strategically. I'm trying to say this strategically because you need to adapt to this. Right. So one of the things that you need to adapt is a technology. Not many people adapting new technology that comes into our world using or leveraging that in using so that you can crush in these bad, let's say, um, seasons, for example. Think about AI. Like a lot of people carriers out there, a lot of people moved on to like adapting AI in their in their business. And, and again, this is a total different topic, but that's what I think. Okay. So we make that very short. Now let's go and take this. Mr. Solo says brokers aren't really the issue. The customer has been paying out. Okay. As for 20 years, now they want a sub for one per mile rate to, to compensate. Yes. And, and again, as I said, you know, we, we specifically talking about the, the, the low low freight. And again, there are a lot of things that contribute to this. But I really want to hear the, the thing that I'm that I'm looking for, I think, is like, hey, I in my business, the number one problem is, for example, hiring the right dispatcher. So in my business is and why I said dispatcher is because if you cannot find the loads, if you don't know how to optimize your load board, and then there is a guy or gal knows how to optimize your load board and get the best paying load off of the load boards, then I think that's the solution to hire a um a a a, a team dispatcher. Think about like l- let me give you an example. So one of my dispatchers, let's say she has about 20 years of experience and she also knows the technology and she really into past three to four years into AI. Think about she prepared before we even, even the Elon Musk throw out, you know, the, the, what the chat GPT thing, right? So think about she was prepared. She knew now she knows the AI and she knows how to use the load boards to optimize the load board. So now you have, let's say, since you got really busy in your business, you got, let's say you hired a, the dispatcher that uses the load board, but it's, it just logs into the load board and puts the origin and destination. This is how or she or he searches. Think about, like you are competing. Think about if I have these four types of like, like A players in my team and we are competing. Think about and this is one of the reasons why I said hiring a dispatcher, right? So what's the number one problem in your business? I just keep repeating because I really wanted to know what's what's the number one um, number one problem in your business. Please share with me. So let's go and talk. Guys, surge your transportation brokers just filled chapter 11 bankruptcy. So avoid booking loads with them. And if you have one you might not get paid for okay so watch out yes so basically this is a more of a like mm, i would say tip 
right? Rather than a problem. But again, it's it's like um, I had these problems in my business where like we haul, let's say, for 20, 30,000 and then the broker filed a bankruptcy is gone. Yes, it's, it's one of the problems. But I really wanted to talk about the problem that you have, the number one problem that you have in your business. So let me take a couple of more and it will go into the solution. As a carrier operator, how to approach shipper or broker? Oh, that's, that's a great question. Okay, I think maybe you have, I think about when you ask this question, I'm thinking about like legion or generating leads for your business is one of the, I think number one, one of the number one problems that the, the owner operators, carriers, um, and and brokers, specifically brokers, obviously, because they're going after like carriers, dispatchers at the same time, shippers, right? To to many people to attract. So lead gen or generating leads is very, very, very important. I think in any business, lead generation is very important. So approach. Like I'm, I'm mailing them, but not getting revert back. Okay, so mailing them, that means you're emailing them. Now, Diksha, I really want, if that's your name, so I really wanted to look at if there is a way that you can share, for example, the, the email that goes out, that's the number one. And I really wanted to see, like, if you have a subject line. Guys, if you do email marketing, specifically emailing for your carriers and approaching, let's say, shippers, brokers, whatnot. But I really want wanted to see not only one email, but let's say like four different emails and testing. And then you have four different subject lines and you're testing against each other. It's very important. It's not just come up with the one email and then it's just a subject line and you just post or, or the sent or a click sent and you're just waiting and see what happens. So that is that. That is the system, right? But before, before, before even that is very, very important is the source of um, the leads that you have. Did you buy? Did you buy the leads? Or like, wh wh where did you get those leads? Did you buy them? Do you generate those leads like for yourself? Like you have a lead gen system and then you have a lead magnet or not. And then you have a sales funnel and then you're driving traffic. And then this is how you get um, people meaning the leads. So the source of a leads are very, very important, right? So in, because of that, maybe you're targeting, let's say, um, brokers in a small brokerage companies, or let, let's talk about the shippers. So if you're targeting shippers and you are really into, let's say, refrigerator or temperature control market, but then you're targeting people that more related to auto transport, for example, right? And they're they're not going to get back to because the market, the niche is very different. So I hope you understand what I'm trying to say, but this is very, very important. Let me take this as a carrier dispatcher. How can we make good use of AI? Um, any tips? Uh, any tips? Think about ChatGPT. Like, go ahead and maybe you, you already know since you asked this question. So the ChatGPT, go to ChatGPT. There's a free version and paid version. Well, obviously, I'm using a paid version. It's about like 20 bucks per month. But then the free version, you can do a lot of things. Think about how you can get um, good use of AI is like think about what you wanted to accomplish, what you wanted to do. I'll give you an example if you, if you don't have one. But we use AI to generate, let's say, really killing Facebook ads. Think about. It. So if you know the prompt to put or the kind of feed the chat GPT, then the chat GPT gives you what you really need. That's really, really powerful tool. So one of the tips will be is it's like a use for Facebook ads. Another thing will be like, think about, we just talked about emails. Like you can write a killer um, emails, like high converting emails using chat GPT. But again, chat GPT is just a tool, but you need to feed this tool so that it, it just gives you the most. What I mean by that is think about the prompts. The prompts are the words that you you give to, to uh, ChatGPT saying, hey, write me a um, 20 pages, let's say a study guide or something like that for X, Y, and Z. So it, it does, but then it's not specific. That prompt is not specific. It will give you some study guides or tips on based on the tracking industry or something like that. Whereas you can say, hey, come up with a 20 um, page study guide for independent freight dispatcher, how to start their independent freight dispatching company in less than 30 days, step by step and period. Then you put be creative, exclamation mark, and then hit the prompt. And you will see that the result you get 
is totally different than first one. So the prompts are very important. I think there's a trending um, um, industry is called the prompt engineering. In engineering, there are a lot of people go into this. Is basically talking about the 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 prompts. It's very 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 important. So guys, let me take a look. And again, if you guys have the questions, if not, then we'll move on to the the solution that I have. So the solution that I have is the number one solution is um, the the general solution that I had is the the marketing. So for the marketing that if you don't have the marketing system, meaning the legion, if you're not generating any leads for your business, you obviously will be struggling. So I said this in general, for those of you um, listening, is it's like, well, we heard this, Kamal, but then, you know, like we need specific, um, you, you know, the, 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 the specific solution for the problem. It will be direct shippers. We talked about this many, many times, guys. You approach direct shippers to survive in this business, period. There's no way, no other way around, but I really want you to do this. But again, you're not doing this. You're not accomplishing this if you don't have a marketing and sales in place. So I hope this helps. And again, guys, we'll be doing in weekly Q&As. Please, for the next Q&A, if you have questions, please be prepared and we'll take it from there.